Hey guys, Tyrep here bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Alliance of Defiance. Playing for today spawning in the south, we have Sestak playing his US forces. And his loadout is airborne. We can support. And urban assault. Team up with him is Boom playing as Soviets who has anti infantry, Soviet combined arms, and counterattack. Facing off against him in the north, we have Muno playing as Osir who has German infantry. I mean German mechanized rather. Spearhead. And Ostrupen. And finally G Dot. Playing as OKW who has special operations. Look for ground forces. And Overwatch. In terms of rankings here. Sistak rank 10. This is randoms rather. Uh, boom 160. Muno 55, 56, and uh, G.131. This match. Okay, a bit of cool wagon action here from G. Dot. I'm staying from behind light like cover, slowly taking it to the stern pies. Meanwhile, completely uncontested on this side for Muno, so. There's a bit of hope that this works out for them, and it looks promising at the moment. And look at all that wire off action on there as well. Sandbags down, boom, really trying to settle in on that middle VP early. But yeah, this does mean, you know, they did come forwards, cap the fuel straight away, so they are going to get slightly superior fuel control through the early stages. Three green start here from Muno, so no G42. Bit of a rare build that one. Fox Fiend is switching away, trying to get away from that 2v1 coming across to the centre. Crew Wagon awaiting repairs. Get some sandbags down. There's a little bit of heavy cover still over here though for those Fox Fiend is, so. The superior cover. Oh, good work there from Sestak, focusing on the squad. It was a little bit further back, but it was building the sandbags. And now, uh, you know, about 85% complete there. Not going to be able to get those sandbags done, unfortunately. Might have been worth just kind of biting the bleed there for a bit, maybe dropping one more model just to get the sandbags down. They're so valuable. Now Muno coming across to the centre with the three Grenadiers. He's gone for a four green start. Didn't go for like a double pyro either. But yeah, I sometimes see with these kind of builds. Conscripts rowing in to close the distance. They've got the Molotovs ready to go. Uh, not lobbing one out. Okay, there it is. I could, just couldn't see the animation. And it's a bit of a rough retreat path here for the Grenadiers. They look extremely low. But these US troops switch their focus fire over to the Kubel, so maybe a missed opportunity to get the wipe there. Nothing on the run. Just took the battlefield. And now Axe is capping on the fuel, so definitely superior fuel control in the early stages for the Axis overall. But not by a huge margin. And now going for the MG42. It's a strange build order from Muno, I have to say. You know, the build just flows so much better if you MG42 early. Especially in 2v2, you know, where it's harder to flank compared to 1v1. But all right. Really ambulance there from Sestak trying to heal up. Didn't heal up fully with this uh, rifle squad though. Coming out with full force. You see a bit of wiring off there from G Dot, but maybe didn't quite change the camera angle. Still quite a few heavy cover positions available back there. It looks like the wire a little bit too close. Of 
full force here for G dot though as well. Trying to squeak around the side with that fault shooting idea. Good focus fire from Sestak, trying to do as much damage as they make that dash across. No. Do get the Decro on the MG42, but not going to be able to get the steal. And now, uh, boom, lost a conscript there. Ouch, going for that maneuver, looks like. Trouble positioning by their tank traps, they seem to want to run out from cover there. And Falschmier getting dropped in now from G dot. And for quite a lot of infantry in the early stages. Double building the sandbags, good play, good play. G42 just covering the fuel point at the moment. Got some shock troops out from Boom, has locked into counterattack. that means. Let's see some B4 action this game. Don't have any commanders with any big off maps here to counter a B4 or a howitzer. So it could be pretty damn effective this match. Hmm, I'm trying to go for a grenade into the tree path there, but mistiming quite badly. Poor result. Get okay, tank trap down on the cutoff. Ooh, making a bit of use of the uh, on me there. Just slight boost that rifle squad, but watching me get already disengaged, so it doesn't really amount to much. But nice to see a bit of usage of that ability. Molotov coming in from a nice angle there. MG42 chased away now. He's come quite low there. There you go. Tier 2 is down though for Muno. Hasn't built anything from it, however. No light vehicle. I feel like if you're up against shock troops, you know, just a 2 2 2 is such an asset. So nice to have. A little bit sloppy there from G Dot. Didn't back away far enough with that Kubel. Ends up going down there. We've got a second squad of Falschmager out now from G Dot. But I uh, might be getting punished a little bit. Because that A half track's going to work here. Quite a late timing on this though. Having a bit over a minute late. To see a stack here. Maybe partially because of the poor fuel control from the allies. Going for that early ambulance as well. Slightly late retreat there on the conscripts. <laughs> Funny flame uh, crit. Death crit. But yeah, now a couple heavy cover positions still left behind. Making G dot pay there. Did cancel his tech truck that he was uh, constructing. SWS and now going for the Raketan. But yeah, if you're up against a player who's going for a build like G dot is, you know, if you don't go for a light vehicle to punish this kind of play, Kind of just playing right into their hands. So I do like it, even though it comes in the later timing. Can't let them get away with just spamming elite infantry in the early stages. Free. And here comes the Raketan. X is pushing onto the fuel. Got the LMGs coming through on the Grandiers now. Do have tier 3, just completed by Boom, and here comes the T-70 again. This is going to be quite a late one, though. Fuel control for the Allies, a little bit lackluster. Boom did take uh, 80 grades, slash Molotovs, worth mentioning. But yeah, desperately need this T-70 to get some work done here. A little bit behind after losing that conscript as well. Things have been uh, not going terribly well for the Allies to this stage. Okay, Half-track backs out safely there. Good reaction times from Sear Stack. 
Troops wrapping around on the machine gun here. Grenade on the wrong side of cover. That could be very damaging. Nearly getting the wipe there. Good reaction times from Moon, no, that could have been uh, horrible. Here comes the T-70 shot troops. Ordinarily, I would not recommend trying to fight into this force, but with the T-70 arriving, maybe he's hoping that they could hold out for long enough. They could leave the shot troops on the front line to cap some territory or something after the fight. It wasn't the case, though. They went down so fast. You know, with the LMGs, with the extra bit of penetration, the flamethrowers also not really caring about armor. It's a pretty good army to melt through those shock troops. Which is why they drop so quickly there. Oh, but there goes the flamethrower squad. Drop their flamer as well. Watching they're going to work, but don't have a second set of FG-42s yet, so this infantry can still hold their ground a reasonable amount. Good, good retreat timing there. No need to drop a whole bunch of manpower. Ooh, ooh! Close call there for Sestak. A little bit later on the retreat, gets punished at pretty close to max range there. Captain goes down. So still the Allies really hurting for territory control. Don't have any fuel at the moment. Sistak locking into Airborne. Has gone for a pack howitzer. Kitten trying to find the A half track. That's way quite quickly. Might have had sight on it because of this rifle squad here. We'll see the retreat, so the half track could come back in here, which is probably what I would recommend. Just an extra bit of firepower against the Fox Communities would really be helpful. Considering the riflemen don't have any weapon upgrades, and the Fox Communities do have these TGs. He needs to stop moving around with them, though. Damage uptime was very, very poor there. Oh wow, Gito went for a flak half track, a very, very, very late timing here. Might work out okay because Boom has, you know, got the replaying, recon planes going. Oh, oh boy, attack round. Oh, off target though, slightly uh, off to the right. Second one, a better angle, but... Half track gets out there. Close call for G dot there. Okay, Construct's coming in on the flank, getting around behind. Machine gun for the moment. In fact, that's the second machine gun now for Muno. Looking the Molotov on the pack, getting it a little bit low. G70 still only one kill, so it hasn't had the impacts. We must have been hoping for so far. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Muno goes straight up to tier 4 here. It's been a uh, pretty easy early game so far from the Axis team. And now all these Greenies upgrade with the LMGs. Soviet infantry really falling off. Especially in the long range engagements. Base coming down for G dot over there. Once again, though, no weapon upgrades from Sestak, making this uh, infantry fight quite tricky for him. Has dropped in some paratroopers though. They're going to help. And, you know, G-Dot, by going for that flank half-track, has delayed his tier 4 tech, so it did delay the FG-42 upgrade on the Mega for quite some time. Gives this deck a little bit more 
time before getting completely dominated here, but sticking around for a little bit too long with a pack hour here. Quite low on health, but still alive at the very least. Okay, we does get decrewed pretty quickly. Requiring three models to crew it. Oh! Oh, big hit from the pack out to there. Ultra goes down and now T70 switching sides. This is maybe a good choice from the allies to try and go for the 2v1 and finally fight back onto a point. And then push Jita off this side. Now concentrating over this side should be a bit easier for them. So I think that was a, a reasonable decision from Boom, just constantly having absolutely no success on this side at all. Especially now with double MGs in such a small area. Very tricky to deal with without indirect fire. Switching things up, makes sense. guns they want to go hunting for that flak half track he's got extremely low there as well our troop is on the wrong side of light cover a bit of trouble against the FT fully to upgraded full of Jaeger which have more veterancy get to already been on the battlefield for so much longer than Sestak's troops the pack Howie, the great equalizer there. And some big hits. A bit too already. Just keeping it active. Got some nice heavy cover positions to camp with as well. But here we go, Panzer IV coming in. We do have two anti tank guns from the Allies already. Tier 4 is going down for boom as well, so we're going to be able to get those 7 man conscript upgrades. We've got a lot of munitions for Sestak. wonder if he's one of those P47 spammers. Those are, those are kind of grenades I don't really like. Just throwing it out. Not really going to do a meaningful amount of damage or you don't win an engagement or get any territory. Those are always some munitions. Some major arty coming down. Clears out the cover position there. We can play shot down very, very quickly though. Those aren't lasting long for boom. So yeah, G dot definitely getting some value from that flak half track, even though it's very late to combat. Getting rid of those recon planes very, very handy. Howitzer going after the tech truck here. It was very, very close to that heat barrage. But he's got it now though. I think it's VET 2, right? Yeah, so didn't quite have it for that first barrage, but going forwards will be quite effective. VT going a little bit far back at the moment. Oh, and quite a lot of bleed here for Boom. Man, that squad went down fast. Those double Falschmeager ripping through that combat engine. A super long range scatter shot from the Panzer IV hitting the AA half track all the way back there. Bit of bad luck. Pops the AP ammo. Major goes down as well. And the infantry from G Dot. Tough. Has finally ticked weapon racks though. So he can hold his ground a bit more, but man, that was really late for Sestak. Oof, I feel like weapon racks are generally something you should probably go for before your first medium tank. And you got them at a very, very late timing. Before you are a major, even. A capture point is under attack. Well, T-70 coming over and getting a few good hits in while the Panzer IV is getting repaired up. 
Kitten's back at base as well, so cheeky stuff. Katusha did a barrage. I wasn't sure what it was targeting exactly. He only got one kill though. And the panther from Luna going straight into a panther. Maybe looking for an angle. I don't see any mines down from a Soviet player either. So this panther could be trouble. We've got the recon plane coming through. Gonna spot the location of that Katusha. What's Boom gonna do here? Looks like Muno getting cold feet. The uh, snaring squad in the way. So besides to stop. Katusha does end up dodging away, but very, very late on the reactions there is Boom. Panzer 4 fended off there. Gum. Looking for another one. Shimmer getting some work done. Got the take aim active. Surprised he doesn't have sight off the uh, Panzer IV back there. Maybe he's ever so slightly out of range. The uh, Panther not super effective against what Boom has gone for here. Mainly infantry. He's got the T70, but. No medium takes for the panther to really go hunting for. And that being said, Boom also doesn't have like a huge amount of anti-tank. So the panther quite free to drive around. Doesn't even machine gun upgrade though on the panther. It's uh, a couple of light AT mines there. Sherman coming across. So, oh, it's on high explosive though. Not terribly effective. There's this getting a pretty good hit in. Got the airborne assault dropped in by G dot. And combining with the LMG Grenadiers, looking for the D crew, down goes the Zis. Panzer IV coming in from the side. Shimon has to be careful. Staying in the targeting zone for quite a long time here. Might get an anti tank pass coming through on him. Might be shielded a little bit by these buildings though. Shimon extremely low after that. Oh, and it goes down! Yeah, Sistek was playing with fire a bit, staying in the danger zone for such a long time. Just trying to, you know, keep his anti-tank gun safe from all that infantry, but he ends up costing him his own tank. Very, very painful. Planes do get shot down pretty quickly, though, by the AA half-track. But the damage has already been done. Jerry, Oof, looks like the plane crashed in and nearly took down the ambo as well. That's nasty. Got a howitzer down from Muno now. Going to work on the Soviet base. Uh, at the very least, the allies have stabilized on the VP count. Only down by a bit over 100. Second Panzer IV out from G Dot. Doesn't have a machine gun upgraded quite yet, so taking a while to decrease the M1, but there it goes finally. Takes engine damage. Trying to back away here. Smoke down from Muno. Probably actually hurting G Dot. Depends if we're able to back away for the moment though. Attack round's missing. What happened? Oh, the Zis actually got outright destroyed. I didn't notice that. Too many LMGs. Can't hold on without a spotter there. The AT gun missing on the flak half track. I'm gonna go down very, very quickly thereafter. Boom. They're too reckless with the positioning on that. No support for it up there. And now the Axe is gonna try to go for the D crew. Do have a fresh Sherman out for CS tank. But really just nothing to fend off the Axis tanks at the moment. I'm lucky that this panther has been uh, relatively out of action for quite a long time. Here comes the Katusha Barrage. Decent one. Of course, a lot of retreats at the least. Five kills now. Should be quick to drive away here. And the M1's going to get outright destroyed by G-Dot. There it goes. 
235 next for Boo. I think that makes a lot of sense. Zero kills on the howitzer, switching angles, maybe going the pack howitzer. Trying to get the engine damage off on the Panther. The re echelon bazookas are assisting quite a lot against the Panther. You know, it does so little anti infantry damage. And how it anti tanks pretty effective against it. Okay, how it's going down at a shorter range than I was expecting. Could catch a few units though, retreating through here. Right. Good luck there from, from the Allies retreating through that area. Max is looking for the triple cap now. Waiting orders. Oh, Panzer IV driving forwards. Wow, there's a lot of scatter on the howitzer there. The enemy is taking our territory. We're for next for Muno. It's pretty much going to round out the composition there. Going to be his pop cap after that. Now there's quite a Falshi Mega as well from GDOT. Drop those down. Going to be a little bit lacking in the snare department though. Only one Fox Creed here left. And I don't think I'll see many mines go down. So it could come back to bite the axis later on. Especially on the right hand side of the map. She's coming down. Once again forcing the Grandiers away. Not getting too many kills. A little bit unlucky on the scatter there is Boom. Oh, and the pack are in some trouble. The vehicle crews, D crewed, going for the Sherman repair over here. Really need them to force away these Falshi Mega. The Panzer Force is bleeding away. 32 kills on that one already. Crazy high kill count in such a short amount of time. But your Green Deers can be pretty hard to kill with the uh, received damage bonus with the rockets target I talk about that quite often if you go for support weapons or like your W troops if possible he jumped up on the heavy cover there oh big hits looking for G dot not bleeding any manpower there got the howitzer coming down from Muno again oh and getting a big hit on the Hey, yeah, half track nearly goes down there. Okay, running forwards. Nice have slowed the VP drain somewhat. Still in some big trouble here. This tech has finally saved up enough for the P47s after all those weapon upgrades he got. Clean up, but only for a split second there for boom. Oh, and that's a nasty rifle nade. So like Sistak's going to try hold the line and at least get the neutralized there before getting forced away by the mass LMGs. Oh, that's a lot of damage from that flak half track. Third Panzer four. Oh, got some action on this side. Katusha Bride's coming in, slamming through these team weapons. And everything gets decrewed. That's exactly what the allies needed. Bunch of kills. LMG Greedy is coming across here. We use that T70 to assist against the infantry a bit. We've got the Panzer Force coming across and the Panther now. Boom could be in some trouble here. Might need to go for the ram. But the P47's coming down. Pretty decent ram. Doesn't get the engine critical though. And now the S-85. In some trouble with the engine damage. Main gun crit on one tank. Panther extremely low with engine damage as well. Need a bit of follow up here. And a lot of Axis tanks could go down. Oh, but the conscripts getting shredded. They jump on top of one of the packs. Looks like one more Panzer IV might go down here. It's going to come down to penetration. It does. And the P47s finish off the Panther. Crazy casualties on both sides here. You can see it's evened up the army sizes by quite a lot. X is only a hit by about 10 now. It's kind of going to depend on who manages to regather all of these uh, team weapons on the ground. Oh, the P47's come through for one last pass. 
Flak off track didn't shoot that down. Flak off track died. Well, there we go. That's why. TCV coming in with a recon mode on. And the pack snipes off the Panzer IV long range. That extra bit of sight making all the difference there. And now the Axis have no tanks at all. Muno going for the instant. Oh. Rebuild on the Panther. Got to be able to recruit the machine gun and the pack as well. But man, that was a devastating push there. By the Allies. Oh. Rambo nearly going down to this pack out. Oh, to the LFH. Again. But yeah, the Katusha getting to work there. Another one, maybe hoping to deny the VP. You know, popping the green med kit so he doesn't have to retreat there. Hit two on that uh, howitzer. Only one kill still, still however. Must be doing quite a lot of damage to the vehicles. Coming out of the ambush bonus here, doing a tremendous amount of damage, even to shock troops for high heavy cover. Oh, Panther going hunting, looking for the T70 here. Katusha could be next. There he goes, picking it off there. Unlucky for Boom. But Boom with no form of anti tank. I'm a little bit surprised he didn't try and steal one of those packs. Still on the ground there. Second howitzer from Muno. I'm a little bit surprised by that. I would have thought the Brumbia would be a more direct uh, way to go right now. It's not like the Allies have a huge number of tank destroyers or anti tank guns or something that are going to counter the Brumbia. Let's see how these howitzers go here. Now going for closer range, scatter much tighter. And they get in with the D crew on the Maxim. Yeah, Lies though holding on to the VPs, and the VPs are close to even at this stage. After such a period of dominance. Hmm, I wonder if this was a misclick here. Airborne Assault coming in for G-Dot. And uh, there's basically no use for it. I thought maybe he'd be going for... Valiant Assault, buffing up his infantry in this situation. I'm not entirely sure why he used... No assault here at all. Just surprised again going after the Grenadiers, but they're on the move. Avoiding the damage. Planes, just about all the planes shot down actually. One pass coming through on the Sherman. Archers there, so the Raketans. Close call for the Sherman. I was going to say, why isn't the AA half track shooting those? Because the vehicle crew is jumping out there. Oh, and a late game uh, fuel cache here from Boom. Surprising. Oh, she may go. Could catch the Sherman crew repairing here. That would be nasty. Double howitz is going to work from Muno. Pounding away. Not hitting too much for this one. All of a sudden, it was at one kill right now. It's up to 10. So it's definitely picked up the pace. I find it strange that Muno doesn't upgrade the um, Shingon's Panther like immediately. The enemy is taking our territory. Boom. Uh, okay, going for another S-35 makes sense. The enemy has broken our supply lines. 
be. It probably would have been better to maybe go for another Zis. Not that there are two houses on the field, but another Zis instead of the fuel cache. Need the extra bit of anti tank here. Sherman looking for the decoy on the Raketon though. And gets it. Second Sherman coming across. G Dot going for the Panther here. Just like it's been quite a long time since he's uh, built a vehicle. No, it just it's been that long. I'm surprised he didn't get out another tank earlier, but okay, here comes the Panther. Going for the kill on this, says, says Tack. I'm a little bit surprised. So he doesn't have any infantry really over here to go for the cap safely at the moment, though. He doesn't want to risk it. Enough for the Grandiers again. 19 kills, still all right. I was just pounding away at the US Forces base exit. Yeah, it could be nasty, very clumped up there. That's with the amount of dirt and stairs. We got one raquette now, so not quite as scary for those Sherman tanks. Don't have to worry about instantly getting blasted down. But gonna have to worry about the Panther next. Two Panthers for the Axis. Eight kills on this, fifteen on the other. That's just really picking up the pace now. Do we have this stolen pack actually from Boom? How did, he, how did he manage to get away with it? I have no idea. Okay, here comes the panther. It's really five and pack of there though, big hits. with a small VP deficit at the moment. Still in it. Another Panther from Muno going to be the choice. We're going to need one more pie on top of that and they'll pretty much round out his composition. This double house is taking up quite a lot of his pop cap here. Kitten going to town on these Shermans. Going for the closer range barrage into the center, stopping the capture there. Mm, I think settling in. And you know, with over half an hour gone already, both teams on roughly half the remaining victory points. It's turning into a very long match. because he's shooting at the planes, interesting. Oh, big hit from the pack alley, still relevant. All this time later. Four Falschenjäger for a GDOT, by the way. Once again, severely lacking in snares. Radio net here from the Sherman. Oh, here come the triple Panthers making moves. Going after the double Shermans, but the AT guns, the SU-85 are there. Makes us get cold feet. Yeah, half track coming across. Kitten coming in quite deep, highly vetted. Panther coming back in from G Dot. Super high vet Raketon is scary, man. Little Panthers decide on a different angle. Maybe we're gonna go Katusha hunting again. Should 
Tech's getting repaired back up. I can feel Sistek here, he's kind of hesitant about his repairs. Doesn't want to risk, you know, losing the vehicle crews. Being quite measured in the way that he repairs his tanks, not just going all in on the front lines. Branch up to the left for Boom, and there's not much here defending, so reasonable decision. Not just going after the pack alley again. Good connections there. Jackson and Sherman, they're going in. Focusing down the Jackson first. We've got five Rocket and such a good rate of fire. A decent amount of bleed from the Sherman tank. Nine kills on that one, Vet one. Change of grenades there, Rakin all of a sudden missing. Oh boy, and the Sherman does not. No more snoring squads at all for G dot or all the Vox communities have gone down. G dot going for an another Panzer four. Drain against the Axis for the moment though. Massive repair bind for Muno having only one Pioneer. We really need to remedy that. It's been gone for a lot. Panzer Greed is though, rather confusingly. Not sure what he's hoping to get with those. But this is uh, four Panthers now, and there are basically no mines around for the Allies. So with some uh, aggressive play, the Axis could just basically steamroll the Allies right now. Just have to pull the trigger. Do have, you know, a couple of recon planes available to them. You check the lay of the land before they get aggressive. G dot trying to inch his way forwards here, but not having much luck. You can't plane up from boom once again. No dodge on the grenade. Oh, but the Panzer IV. Big hit. Chushu going after that Rakitin. Oh, getting very, very low. Wish Mega dodge out to the side. Rakitin stays alive. But yeah, allies have been doing a pretty good job of uh, capping the VPs. Definitely have better VP control than I feel that they should. Maybe because like the Axis are very slow back onto the field after they've uh, got forced away. It would be from the repairs on Muno. Oh, there's a four in some trouble. Sherman's on high explosive though. Going to be tricky to get the killing blow in. Oh, here come the double Panthers. They're missing though, they're going hunting, going after that Jackson. That's a walloping. They get around the side. Oh, but the East 85 from the other side. Got the P47s coming down as well. This Panther still in the danger zone. Could get targeted. Pain split their damage. Lucky for the Axis. So if they both targeted G Dot's Panther, I think it would have gone down there. So trading a Panther for a Jackson, not the end of the world. But yeah, I feel like the Axis should have a, a larger lead than they do at the moment. Oof, okay, there are a couple of mines down. Pigreen's hitting them there. G dot now dropping the planes. Once again, if, if you're not going for any follow-up behind this, this just doesn't make any sense. Okay, here he comes now into the center, and the Sherman coming into the danger zone. Going to take an anti-tank pass. Oh, the monster hit from the howitzer there. Should use a 
about a third of its health. We've still got that AA half track up in the air though. Chopping down those planes. G dot continuing to go for Falschenmega as well. Wants to take cover, but the engagement's already lost. And once again, Muno with no machine gun on the Panther. Very confusing to me. Doubt that his anti infantry damage is miserable. Pekka, are you going for the tip truck again? Quite a bit of pressure. Seven kills and twenty now. Because it's just another wipe, maybe? Maybe a rifle squad went down, a conscript. Double Shermans. Getting the job done at the moment. Continually applying the bleed, and it's expensive, you know. So sort of reinforcing the falchion mega like this. Comes the kitten now. This next first shot. Panther coming through the center. Guys getting a bit of a push going here. Pushing away the raketten with those paratroopers. Jackson did fall back a little bit here. Panther missing though. Panzer IV taking a beat down. Paratroopers getting uh, probably a move forwards or something like that. And now activating, uh, oh no, just the ambush camo. Some false mega damage, but yeah. Definitely needs anti-tank support right next to the false mega, otherwise he's Sherman. Beating the Falchion Mega like crazy at the moment. Just looking for the snare. Got a fresh batch of Falchion Mega rolling through though. Smoke planes coming across. Cheshire going after the repairs. It's a hard retreat from that, and now X is trying to go through the center. We've got a machine gun covering this though at the moment. Okay, being caught with a cover, and now the howitzer coming down to clear that off. Oh, it's going to be the Brumbier from Muno finally. I didn't actually notice that. Already got three kills. Well overdue. Really can't uh, understand why he went for double Panthers. When he was only up against like a T-70. For most of the game. But let's see how the Brumbier does. Looks like he lost one of his P-Green squads at some stage as well. Smoke coming through. Well, the house is about ready to fire. Another Jackson here from Sestak going slightly above the pop cap limit here. 102. Let's see what he can do with all of these vehicles. Shishmaris coming through. The troopers trying to take the Falschenjäger head on, but it's a tough fight. Especially when one of them's focusing on Foschenjäger behind heavy cover over there. Now in a 3v1, needs those Sherman tanks forts. Here we go, a big clash of armor. Looks likely to happen. There's a lot of damage onto these Axis tanks. G dot a little bit late backing away with the Panzer IV here. That's in some trouble. Luckily, Jackson's missing here. 
Oh, but they don't miss then. Things are fall out of control. And Jackson's backing away to safety. Yeah, a little bit clumsy with the armor movement there as G-Dot. A little bit late rotating the Raketan as well. You know, if your Panther took a beat down over here and your Panzer IV is like over here, you could expect that's going to be next, next in line for the beating. And the triple tank destroys. That's quite a shock troops from Boom. Looking to control the central area. Infantry coming across to the left with the Brombeer chasing them away. Jagdpanzer this time from GDOT. Fair enough. Gonna to be tough though coming in against uh, double Jacksons already. Maybe a uh, second rocket could be alright, but. See how it goes. Between 6 and 35 kills per house. Is it definitely working still? There's some good hits going. <laughs> the VPs just uh, refuse to go down. Constantly the center neutral. They're taking uh, engine damage there. A few hits. The howitzer going after the AT gun. Grind is desperately trying to cap in the center. Yakpans are missing on the Sherman. Oh, Green is in Faust range there. If the Jagdpanzer came forwards, they could probably have got the kill. Oh, we're going to drop the planes, though. G-Dot out the back. Still got the AA half-track running around, but here comes the panther Jagdpanzer combo. A T-Gun hanging on by a thread, but down it goes. Panther pushing in. No, getting cold feet. Double Jackson's blasting away. Let's see if the anti-tank planes can come in and finish off this low-health Jackson here. Oh, they're going after the healthy one. Yeah, lucky break there for Sestak. They targeted that low health Jackson. That would have been the kill there. And oh, the Brumbeer getting aggressive. Chasing away the Soviet troops from the center and the left. One green deer left now. I think there were two in the center just before, right? One of them went down. Access and control the VPs. To force the allies all the way back. I think they destroyed that decrewed anti-tank gun as well, so... Yeah, I didn't get the Jacksons. A little bit unlucky, but at least taking down that anti-tank gun. Which I think was uh, pretty highly vetted as well. Seven thirty six. That's steady workers for Muno. Okay, it's this tank. Or's armor back up to full strength, ready to get something going. Oh, that's a nasty Howie shot there. Go down. What you can do about that? It's all out infantry assault. Double Sherman coming across. Getting going. Getting going now. You could see a smoke here from Sistac. Uh, Try to add to the micro burden of G dot. Go for some uh, attack rounds and stuff with the Rakitin. Oh, there's a lot of damage from those Shermans. Need taken down one. Panther going in. Go for a bit of a dive on the East 85, but sees the supporting uh, 
T-34 just arriving and decides to back out. Which is a wise choice. Otherwise could have just got rammed and would have gone horribly wrong there. The Nexus still holding on to the VPs. 10 VP lead or so. T-34 going in. Panther over here without much support. One ready there for Snares. Gets Snare going. Blitzing away with the Panther now. Oh, he's ready. Five misses the killing blow. Bit of bad luck. Jumps on top of the pack here. I'm spin around going for that T-34 kill. Meanwhile, Double Jacksons came in. Yeah, Panzer and Panther here taking some uh, beatings. And now the P-47's coming through as well. You got, I think, early enough on the retreat. Shouldn't go down here. The Double Jackson's coming in. Maybe they're going to go for the tech truck next. You got Shreer in some trouble. The kitten coming across. It's too late. And Jackson's continuing on their attack. Go off the howitzers next, maybe? A lot of repairs for the Axis at the moment, and you know, Muno still just relying on that one Pio. Incredibly slow repairs. Can't play up from Boom. Eyes now though, looking to see up the triple cap on the back of that strong push. Getting some serious territory control going. For some long range bunker busting, pretty safe from that range. Gets the D crew. Going for the kill on the pack with these 35, interesting. Green's trying to go for the cap in the centre, but the uh, Sherman. Too scary. Yak Panzer repaired. Panther just about back up. Axe is coming into the centre now. I'll leave that VP pressure. They're about to tick under 100. That's a scary amount of false mega coming forwards, and there's so many craters down on the ground now. There's so many opportunities to camouflage as well. I don't know what he's doing with those Falsham Giga running out of the Sherman. Here comes the Panther now, though. Perhaps the Falsham Giga did get forced to retreat, though. Patricia stocking the cap over here, but he's back on top of it. Pigreens of the repairing squad. Trick's coming across now as well. Good work here, you know, staying away from the, the kitten and the panther. The panther was there though. Oh, big hit from the pack alley as well now. The panther going into cautious movement. Oh, getting detected though. Oh, Jackson's blast away. Jackson's not chasing down though. Missing. Getting right there. I'm surprised he hasn't shot yet. Oh boy, and the Yak Panzer stop backing away. And the recon plane provides sights. The Jacksons finish the job. And the Panther, I think, shot at infantry there instead of one of the Jacksons, and then the Jackson gets away. So G Dot. Maybe having a bit of trouble. This has been a real marathon match. Losing control of his units a bit there at the end stages, costing him his Yak Panzer, missing the kill in return. Oh, the Katusha and the Pakawi combining there, Panzer Green Deers go down. Finds the issue 85 here. That sits up at a good range. K-47 
case the panther wants to chase him any further. Oh, there we go. There's the smoke. Nice to see. And an attack round attempt from G Dot. Also nice. No reward, but good action anyway. Okay, light AT mine's going down on the flank from Sestac. Interesting. grenade there. Greedy is up to 69 kills. It's been one of those games. And uh, now Muno just going full pea green action. No snares. The axe is desperately lacking snares. Oh, actually a fresh A half track from G Dot. Didn't expect that. See these rear echelon go down now on retreat. Oh, double Jackson's blasting away at that panther there. And the Rakitin gets decrewed as well. Loses all the veterancy from that. That's a huge loss. Panther coming in from the side here, but tagged on the way in. Now that all these tank destroyers are well vetted for the Allies Axis, they're having a really tricky time against them, especially considering they don't have any snares. Uh, no anti-tank guns either. They do have some pea green shreks. Feels like they're not getting the opportunities to get on top of those tank destroyers. All the medium tanks bleeding them on the way in. But yeah, Fulcher Mega, you know, they're nice, but they do bleed a lot. This is where maybe one or two squads of Fulcher and is rebuilding them makes a lot of sense. Get the snares, cheap recrew on team weapons, sandbags. Gee, not bleeding hard at the moment. Yep, struggling to reinforce all these Fulcher Mega back at his base. Playing up in the air, Jackson's closing in. Going for the damage on the Jackson here. That's strange. We killed the flak half track. There's Panther rotating. Oh, the Powie stopping the cap in the center. Axe is going to hold on there. Nice down to 84. Fresh Rakitin from G-Dot, I think that's a wise decision. Is it fresh already that little of veterancy? Shooting at some highly vetted vehicles itself. Could work with the smoke onto the Rakitin though. Panther extremely low. The troopers in deep. Other Panther comes through to act as a bit of a blocker, but not on prioritized vehicles. Start shooting at the paratroopers instead. And then they lob a grenade, nearly decrew the raquette and hanging on by a pixel there. Double shreks. Try to get in range. Chusha barrage. The shreks avoiding the damage for the moment. Doesn't have anything that uh, buffs up the shreks though. No uh, sprint for them or anything like that. Bombier coming back into the center. Pretty close to Vet 2 on that now. Oh, is that the last M LMG Green? Drop the MG42. Troops 
trying to go for the capture. Allies really hitting for the VPs, Exorcist. Really managed to hold on to them effectively, especially the center, thanks to those double howitzers. Any time the Allies try and jump in there, one of those howies starts shelling away and those can't cap. Might need to think of going for the other VP on the far side. Only defended by one machine gun at the moment and occasionally the Brumbier. I see some tanks over there that can clear it out very easily. But it looks like Allies are trying to go through the center here. Got the recon plane up, providing sight for these Jacksons. And some damage down long range. Got the double Shermans coming in from an angle. Our opponents are seizing a sector. But the recon plane shot down pretty quickly by the flak half track, really helping out the Axis. Nice hits in there. And there. Taking some big hits. Oh, the double Jackson's coming in from the side. They're back away. Everything's surviving for the moment. Oh, well, maybe not the paratroopers. Exchanging grenades there. Figures come out worse for wear. Katusha, oh the Brumbier. Oh, I thought the Katusha would be tagging the Falschenjäger. Not hitting too much with that. And the points are stalled once again. Nice down to 58 axes at exactly 100. We're coming back in with a bunker buster. The damage onto the anti tank gun. Oh, gets the decor on it. There you go. It's just going for the cap. The train going to be back on the allies here. They are making some moves trying to get across to this VP, but we can complain on that side as well. And now capping in the center. How it's just ready to rumble again. 63 kills, 47 on the other. Oh, he's going for a deeper shell with that. Okay, clock has stopped down 52 now. Oh, Sherman on the ground. Jackson's have backed away very, very far here. Not able to support against the Panthers. We're back in now though, Rakitin has inched its ways forwards. Shock troops in deep with the four Mother Russia looking for the white, but don't quite get it. Double Jacksons spot that low health Panther, down it goes. Once again, G dot not backing away far enough. And the Panthers picking him off. Oh, now the Brumby are in some trouble. He's 25 and pack combo finishing the job there. A couple big armor losses all of a sudden for the Axis. The next allies are looking to get something going. He's 35 just hammering away. We do have Shrek's coming in from the side. Oh, but so are the Jacksons. Here they go. Panther takes the main gun critical. Unlucky. And the allies swarming now, getting all sorts of decrews. Rebuilt tech here from G Dot, but. Didn't manage to get any uh, tanks out of it, I don't think. Double Jacksons are not entirely sure what they're going in here for here. Sherman's swarming the oh pea greens go down as well. Double Jackson's backing out for repairs. Not quite able to uh, finish off these tech trucks. Looks like the Sherman switched over. Armor piercing as well, looking to take down this tech truck, but with the Shreks arriving, it's hurting their anti infantry and taking a lot of damage on those. Allies do manage to get the cap off, oh, but it cost them the machine gun. This house is continuing to get the job done. So, a huge push there from the Allies. Oh boy, that's risky repairing right there. Valiant assault. 
You can melt through those straight away. Just out of sight range for the moment. Okay, jumps back in at a good timing. That was a bit risky though, I think, from Sistac. Another Panther out from Muno. Shock troops do manage to get them neutralized, and now the drain quite fast against the Axis. Shimon coming in again. Just hold the ground, former the Russia active still. Jackson's uh, fully repaired, and it looks like they want to come and finish off the tech truck once again. G Dot is rebuilding the Panther at the moment. Didn't manage to recruit the Raketan though once again. Oh, we forgot about it. Oh, we got the planes coming in though from Sestak. B-47s, Panther trying to circle around behind that bitted up SU-85, but now taking a beat down, trying to escape, SU-85 misses. Black half track goes down to the Jackson. And my takes finish off the tick. From GDOT just before the Panther came out, looks like as well. Heartbreaking for him. He's calling in his planes now, the Airborne Assault. Defensive position as well. One of the houses has gone down. It looks like the allies are on cleanup duties at the moment. And the axis throw in the towel. So yeah, uh, not sure about some of these build orders from the axis. You know, Muno with the double panthers. You know, the axis had this timing window where they had four panthers. The allies had very little in the way of anti-tank. Panthers easily could have swarmed in and closed out the game, but I suppose, you know, as a random team, maybe those things are a little bit tricky to coordinate. And they've, you know, the allies just slowly grinding their way back into the game, accumulating armor, picking off pieces of Axis armor here and there, bleeding the Falsham area like crazy this game. Still at a positive KD though. But yeah, believing the Falsham Jaeger G dot going for just continuous Falsham Jaeger, never mixing in any false screen ideas to you know go for the cheap recruits, cheap capping squads, sandbags, stuff like that. Pure Falsham Jaeger, I don't know about that. And yeah, maybe uh, a couple opportunities where you know he maybe just forgot, didn't back away quite far enough with his tanks around here, getting sniped off by the Jacksons and. They put the axis quite far behind at those stages, but nasty work from those howitzers. I think they were both around 60 kills at the end of the game, shutting down the ally capping hard. But yeah, qu a couple of questionable build orders all around maybe this game. Well, anyway, guys, we're wrapping that. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.